All right, in this video, we're going to be discussing all the interfaces you will be encountering while using Xero. And kind of the goal of this video is just to really highlight the interfaces that are going to be particularly important to you. And uh, also because there's a lot of details in accounting systems that probably apply to other industries and other verticals. And uh, my goal is just I'm, I want to really draw your attention to the stuff you're going to be spending most of your time in. And I guess we'll start by saying uh, zero when you log in, you're immediately going to be shown this dashboard. This is kind of the hub. And there's a lot, a lot that goes into this dashboard. And in fact, I decided to make a whole video just to dig into the details of this dashboard. So it's meaningful for you. But pretty much everywhere in Xero can be navigated to from this top level menu. And uh, at the top here, this is where you're going to go log into like kind of behind the accounting system, like billing, that sort of thing. Uh, this is a link straight to your dashboard. And then uh, you'll see this accounts drop down menu. And I'm going to go walk real quick one by one through these. So we have bank accounts. This is really just an expanded version of the dashboard where you can hit up a lot of features related to your bank accounts. You can add bank accounts. Uh, you can set up bank rules. Also under the accounts, you'll see sales. So sales is really, it's going to house all your invoices. Anytime there's money coming in, particularly for you, that's going to be uh, invoices that come from Amazon via the A2X plugin. You're going to see them here. Uh, there's really four different types of invoices, really four different statuses. There's the draft status, which is the default status when they come in from A2X. And you're going to see a waiting approval, waiting a payment overdue. You can also see customers who owe you the most. Really, honestly, I, I mean, there's a lot of details here. Mostly what you're going to end up doing day to day is going into drafts, hitting approve. Um, that's that's really all. If you end up going into wholesale at some point in the future, you may end up wanting to create an invoice, something along those lines. Uh, but really, really and truly, most of the time, you're just going to be coming into draft invoices and then checking out um, the maybe what invoices you're still waiting to line up to payouts for your bank account. So this is the kind of sales where all the invoices revenue is housed. The other option on the account drop down menu is purchases. So this is really just the flip side to invoices. This is money that is going out. So a lot of times supplier bills will show up here. If you want to go ahead and create supplier bills to keep track of those, this is where you're going to end up doing that creating new bills. You can end up attaching documents to bills like, this is where you're going to just keep track of all the money, the purchase orders and money going out from your business. There's also under the accounts drop menu checks. If you want to write checks, a lot of times what happens is uh, when you write a check, it hits your bank account. All your bank account will tell you is check number 115. So what you can do is actually come into zero and create a check at the time that you're writing it. Uh, honestly, most of my clients don't use a whole lot of checks. so. This isn't a widely used feature, but feel free to use this if you end up writing a lot of checks and it's really difficult to keep track of them all. You can go ahead and write it in zero as you're writing it on paper. Um, also in the accounts drop down menu, you'll, you'll see inventory. So honestly, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I don't particularly recommend that Amazon sellers use inventory. Uh, this is really like a inventory light. Uh, and, and there's really better tools out there for Amazon sellers in terms of inventory. So I'm not going to go into the details of this, but uh, this is where if you were to end up creating inventory items, this is where they would live. There's also an expense claims drop down menu. Honestly, most of the times you use expense claims if you need to reimburse employees. I wouldn't recommend this if you're an owner and you're trying to reimburse yourself. I really have a, a different workflow for that. So um, expense claims. I, Personally, don't really like the workflow of this. I, uh, yeah, if you have employees, not a whole lot of Amazon sellers in a do, especially in my, uh, I guess, target market. But um, this is where you could potentially create expense claims. Um, personally, my recommendations kind of stay away. And kind of the last thing under the accounts drop down menu is the fixed assets. So these are, uh, this is a place where you can track assets and manage like writing them off. So. For example, let's say you bought a laptop and it was $2,000. Generally, um, IRS doesn't let you just immediately expense off all $2,000 worth that laptop. You have to do that over a period of time. So this is the place that you would really manage that. Um, there's a payroll drop-down menu. 
I'll just tell you up front, payroll and zero is not the most elegant. It comes with it, which is particularly nice. But um, if you anything that you need to manage payroll, you do that here. There's definitely better payroll options out there. And if you're wondering what those are, feel free to hit me up in an email. I'll shoot you uh, some info about that. Um, and then under the reports drop down menu, you have it. I guess the first thing I'll draw your attention to is you have this favorite section. So when you go into all reports, what you'll notice here are there's stars next to certain reports. And when you first set up your account, there's about six reports that immediately have a star and those show up in the favorites. You can uh, go into all reports and change up. You can remove stars, you can add stars if you wanna add to favorites menu. But uh, I, I discuss a little bit later what the particular reports that you need. But this drop down menu is anytime you need to crunch data in, and zero, you're probably gonna to wanna to go to the reports menu. Um, and I totally recommend you come in here and I don't really have time to go over every single report in here. Uh, at the end of the course, I'll draw your attention to the most important ones, but I, I totally recommend you come check out all the different reports. You can hit the little ellipses and see further reports in each section. Uh, some things you can do is uh, create custom reports. You can publish reports so that in the future, if you want to come back to maybe what last year's income statement looked like, you can publish that and it's basically set in stone. Uh, but that's kind of the reports functionality. And then there's also the advisor functionality. Mostly what you're going to be doing here is creating manual journals, particularly for inventory adjustments. And then you're probably going to be wanting to do find and recode. I explained that in the bonus section, really, really powerful tool. Totally check that out. History and notes activity, this is kind of an audit trail. So maybe if you're sharing the accounting system with someone else and you need to go look up what someone else already did, you can do that via the history and notes. If you ever decide to move away from zero, you can export um, contacts. This is really not as hugely important part of zero, but whenever you have transactions, you create contacts for whoever you sent money to or whoever you received money from. This is where you're gonna house all of that. And then finally, under the settings menu, uh, I'll dig into the general settings here. The most important settings you're probably gonna run across, chart of accounts. These are all the places that you're gonna be able to categorize transactions to. Really, really important. I have a video discussing that in further detail. Then users is another place you're gonna probably wanna spend a good bit of attention in uh, if you ever need to invite someone into the account. Other than that, there's really not a whole lot of settings that you really need to play around with. Pretty much chart of accounts users may need to go to conversion balance from time to time, but that really is mostly it. Um, feel free to drill down and see what some of these are about, but um, those are really mostly the settings you're gonna be wanting to deal with. And then I'll just come back to the dashboard here and explain the rest of the interfaces. So there's this plus sign. It's really a, a short key to if you ever need to create a transaction like an invoice or bill, manual journal, you can create on the fly really, really quick from anywhere in Zero with this plus key. There's also this file folder. It works it's called Zero Files. You can send files via email to yourself or like drag and drop files. So let's say you have a receipt, you can email that to yourself, or let's say you have a a supplier bill that you want to put in zero, you can actually drag and drop that supplier bill in here or email it and attach an image to a bill or an invoice in zero. So zero files, pretty handy. Then you have this envelope. This is notifications. So anytime you have anything messing with bank feed that's going to show up here, any new product releases that's going to show up in notifications. Then you have the search function, which is a global search. You can search by invoice, by bill, by even dollar amount. Um, sometimes it gets a little wonky, like not quite as intuitive, but this is a pretty new feature and something that they're improving every day. So uh, check out the global search, really, really handy, especially if you need to go look up a particular bill from a particular supplier. This is a really, really good place to um, go look them up real quick. And then you'll see this question mark. This is where if you ever need help with something, you can type in, for example, how to set up a bank feed. And it'll give you a whole list of resources based on the question that you just submitted. Also, um, if you need to contact support, you do this from the question mark. 
if you need to actually go to specifically get help for a particular page, this is a really good place to do it. And also I'll draw your attention real quick to the Help Center. This is a really, really good place that if you want to systematically go through specific features in Xero, this has like everything you need from particularly using Xero day to day, everything from bank accounts to checks to contacts, almost everything you could think of, they've created a help file on that by now. So uh, you access the help center via the question mark. And then the last thing is this drop down menu for yourself. You can create a user profile. You can also log out. So this is uh, all the main uh, interfaces you use in Zero. I'd say most of the time you're going to be using the dashboard and you're also going to be categorizing transactions, which I'm going to be discussing kind of in the next few uh, videos, the interfaces you're going to be using to reconcile and categorize your transactions.